Uh, good afternoon. It is my pleasure this afternoon to introduce Master Warrant Officer Nathaniel Sant, and his talk this afternoon will be Rebuilding Domestic HF Capability Through CFARS, which is the Canadian Forces Amateur Radio uh, System. Uh, Master Warrant Officer uh, Sant is a 27-year uh, veteran, currently serving uh, with the Canadian Forces. Uh, his passion is using technology to enable people uh, in their personal and professional lives and a passion that has taken him all over the world. And this includes the U.S. Army Mars headquarters in Arizona, Cornwall, England, and Trondheim in Norway. He's been involved in the radio world through the military for 20 years and finally took the plunge and got his amateur radio license last year. And his call, Victor Alpha 7, Sierra November Foxtrot. Uh, he's recently moved out to Comox in BC with his wife and three-year-old daughter uh, for work and is excited for the opportunity that Islamic Islam, Islam life provides. Something like that. So, here is Master Warrant Officer Nathaniel Semp. Thank you. All good. All good. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, as stated, my name is Master Warrant Officer Nathaniel Semp. I'm the Joint Task Force Pacific HF Radio OPI, the CFARS Deputy National Manager, and the Canadian Scottish Government Canadian Company Sergeant Major. A uh, quick break there, that photo up there is uh, me taking a course down in Arizona with the U.S. Army Mars people. Uh, it was information through a fire hose for two days, it's kind of crazy. Next please. So a brief outline of what I'm going to be talking about today, I'll be briefly talking about civilian infrastructure and domestic emergencies, uh, PACE plans, military HF use in BC and CFARS. And for those participating in the studio audience here, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that it's lunchtime. So I'm going to go really fast because I'm kind of hungry, just saying. Next, please. Now, personally, one of the things I've noticed is that um, the, the civilian infrastructure for, for communications in Canada, and particularly in BC where I'm from, isn't as stable as we all would love. Whether it's cell phones going down because of misconfiguration at Rogers, or something falling out of a line, or even mudslides, mudslides fires, stuff like that. It's not as... Uh, not as stable as we would like. Next, please. This becomes particularly problematic because I've personally noticed that there's been more and more domestic emergencies in the world and in Canada in particular, including uh, everything going on in the interior of BC and Northwest Territories. Next, please. From a communication standpoint, this becomes a bit of a problem because most stuff ends up routed through the internet. Desk phones end up as VoIP over the internet, Cell phones, VoIP over the internet. Sat phones have to talk to desk phones and sat phones, so data over the internet. Emails, obviously, data over the internet, with it one exception. And Teams, Zoom, Skype, obviously, is data over the internet. Next, please. This is a problem, and I know I'm oversimplifying here, but the internet en ends up becoming a bit of a single point of failure. Not cool. Next, please. In the military uh, and, and in civilian life, often people use what's called the PACE plan. And I know a lot of this, I'm preaching to the choir, uh, but it needs to be said in public forums as much as possible, and hopefully eventually some people will listen. So PACE plan stands for Primary Alternate, uh, Alternate Contingency and Emergency. And the guiding principle behind that is one form of communication is the same as nothing, two forms of communication is the same as one, and four forms is just enough. Kind of like coffee, actually. Uh, next, please. So the task that's been given to me is to facil facilitate a long distance backup communication network in case civilian inf infrastructure is unavailable, whether it's not functional or if we're 100,000 miles away from anything that works. So not only is the task for me to facilitate this long distance communication network, it's also to make sure that it actually gets regularly used because uh, I'm an optimistic pessimist by nature and I believe that if we don't test things, it might as well not exist. You know, if a radio is sitting on the shelf, has dust on it, Miles just assume that the batteries are dead and it's broken. Next, please. 
so I talked a little bit about the pace plan and what I'm basically trying to do with this task is create the contingency, the backup for the other systems, but also make sure that that backup for the other systems, the buttonology is familiar with people and it, it is as uncomplicated as possible for the end users. Next, please. So what I'm doing is I'm buying 18 HF radios and the intent is to install 12, 12 of them in military installations throughout BC and then have six transportable ones for uh, varied reasons. I'm gonna have four to six of my own licensed frequencies uh, in the band similar to C4S, which we'll talk about in a bit, but slightly outside ham band ranges. Uh, I'm installing one to two dipole based antennas in NVIS configuration or near vert vertical incident skywave with a whip as an alternate in all those locations. We're gonna be going with ALE 2.0 for those that know. And then in the next iteration, we're gonna be adding Vera and Pactor data. Next, please. Uh, here's a rough map of where I'm going to be installing all of them, all the all the 12 base radio stations. Next, please. And the reality is, is all I'm trying to do in BC is augment the Canadian Forces affiliate radio system stations that are currently in place. It's affiliate, not amateur. One of the things I'm trying to do uh, in my program is to make sure we don't use the word amateur. As much as I appreciate it, and when I'm talking to you guys, I love the word amateur but it's a word that causes problems when we're talking about with the emergency professionals. So we use affiliate uh, and there's other words, but we're using affiliate for now. Next, please. So the Canadian Forces Affiliate Radio System. The Canadian Forces Affiliate Radio System is an, a volunteer group of CAF affiliated radio operators ready to assist the Canadian Armed Forces as required. In a lot of ways, we are the Canadian version of US Army Mars, for those of us that are aware of what that is. And now, before we go into the next slide, sorry, uh, one quick thing is just because you may not be a military member, we still welcome you if you have HF skills. You're affiliated with us. You don't necessarily have to be a retired member or currently serving member. Next, please. So CFARS. CFARS was established in 1978, the year I was born, by the way. Uh, initially, it was a radio phone system to allow service members to call home from overseas service, essentially phone patches, and it was initially operated overseas by uniformed members and we had a mixture of civilians and of uniformed members back in Canada. Next, please. That's a lot of stuff on one thing. Basically, CFARS is a mix of, of military stations and civilian operated stations. Uh, historically, CFARS has worked with the Coast Guard. Um, it's worked with the RCMP. It's worked with Public Safety Canada, Transport Canada, all those stations. And it's basically, CFARS has been more and more a backup system of collecting data and sending it, um, as disseminating it as required. Next, please. The purpose of CFRS has evolved over time, providing the cap means of establishing and conducting long distance communications and data gathering using a system of capable operating independent, or uh, a system capable of operating independently of established infrastructure. Uh, one quick note, you'll notice the CFRS is own Phil McBride on the bottom right. Next, please. So CFARS today, uh, CFARS provides HF subject matters for the CAF. Unfortunately, the CAF has really um, let some of our HF skills to languish. So we need you as the experts in HF to help us. We run regular HF radio and data nets. We provide HF players in CAF training and we support HF operations during domestic emergencies. You also notice Phil McBride and CFARS very own bottom right. Next, please. Told you I was gonna bug you. Uh, so in domestic emergencies, one of the things that we are trying to do is provide essential data ga gathering during domestic operations, providing essential passage of data to the CAF chain of command to ensure that the right people have the right information at the right time in the right format. And more and more CFRS is evolving to a sensor network across Canada that gathers data to help collate it and give it to the intelligence community. Next, please. So, if you think that CFARS is a cool thing, we have a little bit of some prerequisites from you. We need you to be HF capable with data, a minimum of 100 watts, and Vera at a minimum. We need you to be able to follow our communication plan. It's usually not very complex, not, more often than not, not as complex as many of the clubs out there. We need you to be able to maintain, as required, a CFARS data gateway 24 seven, including WinLink. We need you to be able to participate in regular CF, CFARS radio nets exercises and competitions. 
We're currently in the process of talking about what, what that means. So you don't necessarily have to be on every week, but we need you to be there semi-regularly. And we need you to be able and willing to modify uh, your radio to transmit on CFRS frequencies that fall slightly outside normal amateur bands, which is often known on the internet as the Mars mod. Next, please. Just a quick note about the Mars mod. Unlike other emergency communication organizations, CFRS has frequencies assigned to us by the CAF and I said that, that are close to but outside the established amateur radio bands. This allows us to avoid interference from the usual suspects. Uh, these frequencies are close to the normal handbands, and the modifications are pretty cheap to apply. More often than not, basically, you're moving a resistor or cutting uh, a patch on your radio. Next, please. So why would someone want to be part of CFARS, in addition to it being kind of cool? Uh, we are there to help Canada and Canadians in a domestic emergency. We, we participate in domestic uh, exercises that regularly help develop domestic response skills in Canada. We participate in national and multinational competitions, and you get a cool CIW call sign. So cool. Next, please. In the future, uh, we are going to be building more and more uh, domestically operational related exercise into our plan. We're working on increased interoperability with Mars. We're working on increased focus on being ready to support provinces and municipalities through the lens of the CAF and in the future hopefully includes you based on your ability to pass our application process. Does anyone want to know more? The best place to start is next, please, our newly relaunched website, cfars.net. Uh, or you can send me an email. There's two ways to send me an email, one at the end, and also Phil McBride is cool at cfars.net. Any questions? Over there. I can only really speak to Western Canada, where I'm from. Uh, we run weekly nets. Uh, we we have we have our our Sunday nets and our, uh, Sunday nets and our Wednesday night nets. We're talking about uh, right now. We're re we're we're changing some of the program. Uh, we don't expect people to be at every single net because that's pretty onerous. So we're 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 having a discussion about what the minimum should be. Uh, personally, uh, I think it should be uh, an exercise a season and a minimum of two, net, two of the weekly nets a month. Uh, but we're kind of in the process of discussing this. Um, again, we want to make sure that there is a mechanism for people if they want to take a step back and what that means. Uh, and we want to make sure that we also just aren't too onerous so we don't scare people away with everything we're up to. You first. Most of the nets are regional. Uh, we're more and more. We're talking about also doing um, national nets. If I can, if I can just add to that. One second. Uh, if I can add to that, there is a weekly Trans Canada net yeah. uh, once a week. So yeah, there, there, one of the nets. I'm drawing a blank here as to which there's a weekly national regional net and a weekly national net. Yes. TVD. There, there is it, it is something that we are going to, just because uh, most of our military people don't have the same amount of experience as the people in this room. Most of the people in this room have way more experience than me. That's why I'm trying to not get too technical, because I don't want to sound too dumb. Um, but yes, that is where we're going, I believe. For sure. It, it's something we're still still in discussion. Um, CFARS is kind of going through a growth phase um, for reasons that I don't want to get into right now. It's been allowed to languish a bit, and we're in the process of rebuilding it. So there's there's a bunch of things that we haven't fully discussed to that level yet. But yes, any other questions? Hey Phil, did I screw anything up? Can you let me know? No, I didn't completely screw up. Awesome. Uh, anyhow, thank you so much. Um, like I said, I was going to be quick and dirty because it's lunchtime. Uh, I will be here all day and uh, the rest of the weekend. Please feel free to come up to me and talk to me. I'm, I try not to be too scary. My, contact, my, my regular contact info is on the screen there. 
Uh, it's Nathaniel at centerforces.gc.ca. Love to talk to you and hopefully talk to you about joining CFARS. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Nathaniel for his speech and because